Hello Makers! Welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk about the Printrite Kalido Compact. Stick around! Welcome back makers. So as you can see in front of me, I spent quite some time printing with the Kalido Compact. It was sent to me by Kalido a couple of months ago where I did an unboxing and initial thoughts and also another episode where I installed a USB external cooling fan for the printer. Now the printer has a print volume of 130 by 130 by 130 millimeters and comes fully enclosed in a clear acrylic frame. Few things it doesn't have are an LCD screen, a heat bed and a part cooling fan. The three things that make it a bit difficult to print certain things but we'll get right into that. Now the printer is aimed at a younger generation and you can see that straight away from the way that the uh, printer is built with the full clear acrylic frame where you can see all the internal workings of the printer itself while it's printing. Apart from that it's in case so no one can kind of reach in and touch any uh, dangerous parts in the printer. Initially I started printing via PC. I, it had to be tethered. The fact that it doesn't have a, an LCD screen which makes it a bit difficult. However I um, had quite a few fails due to Windows updates so I did a bit of research and it turns out there is a way you can actually use the SD card with any Marlin firmware that does not require an LCD screen. All you need to do is make sure to save the file as auto0.g, insert the SD card, switch off and back on the um, printer and it will start the print automatically. The next issue to mitigate was the LCD screen. Having that information on the print is quite useful. So what I did was I uh, got myself a Raspberry Pi. I installed AstroPrint in it. Within 10 minutes, I was able to control the printer via Wi-Fi and also set up a camera just to see what the prints are doing while I'm away. Now, initially I did quite a few prints and you can see those prints when I did the initial thoughts of the Kalido Compact. It was a bit unimpressive. The fact that it doesn't have a part cooling fan makes it a bit difficult to print in PLA. And the fact that it doesn't have a heat bed means that this printer is aimed at printing with just PLA. I have no quarrels than that whatsoever. I can see that someone who's either starting out or a younger generation just want to play around and experiment. So PLA is the way to go. However, when you're printing with PLA, you need a part cooling fan because the plastic needs to cool down after it's being laid down in order to hold its structure intact. Now, unfortunately, my initial prints were a bit disappointing because they had a lot of sagging in them. So what I did was I did this thing right here, which is a frame with a USB fan. I did a video on it, which I'll put a link somewhere here. And you can see the difference that made. And it was a well, well needed add-on. There are possibly other ways you can install a part cooling fan. The problem is that the carriage is quite large. There is not a lot of room to put anything additional on this. The idea would possibly be to do a Bowden extruder and then you'll have enough space to install a specific part cooling fan. Now, once I installed the USB fan, I decided to venture a bit more into a bit more complicated prints with PLA. So I threw in these two benches right here. These printed out okay. They aren't perfect. They still have some issues in terms of heating and the reason for that is the USB fan while it throws in quite a bit of cool air it is not concentrated. It keeps on spinning around the chamber and sometimes escaping from the top so I had to close the top. Following that I also decided to print this Bulbasaur which I think looks absolutely awesome. It didn't seem to have any issues with overhangs. It still had a few issues though with extruding and that is mainly because the Kalido Compact comes with Repetier Host and I was having a bit of issues dialing in the settings on the slicer engine. Infill was becoming an issue. It was, uh, it was printing more infill than it actually should have. Like a 5% infill was almost a 90% on a normal slicer which just didn't make sense to me. So I eventually decided to port all the settings to Simplify 3D and start printing from there. Once that was done, I decided to print uh, the Pegasus by Ryan, 3D printed Aspie. 
and this is the result. And it came out quite nice. The only problem was that there is a bit of inconsistent layers. So it could possibly be me changing the slicer and not dialing in the settings properly. So I kind of tweaked it a bit more and went on from there. However, this particular mother came not bad at all. Under the chin, there were a bit of issues with overhangs, but that's mainly due to the lack of a part cooling fan. I then decided to print Adelinda in a slightly smaller scale because it doesn't fit in the 130 millimeter height volume. It wasn't too great. Unfortunately, the issue with overhangs started persisting again, and I was kind of seeing a pattern, but I wasn't going to be thrown off. I still wanted to print something a bit more challenging. So I decided to print this vase right here. And I'm gonna be honest, this, this vase actually printed really nice. It came out gorgeous. It is, it's not scaled down because it actually fit right in the build volume. It did have the USB fan, of course, but other than that, beautiful. Finally, I wanted to print something which I've never printed before. And Joel, 3D Printing Nerd, always prints faceless model. So I did a bit of research, found it, downloaded it, and started printing. The first print was this. And what happened here is that apart from having really inconsistent layers and not enough top layers, the bed actually moved out of the way. And I will get to that in a little bit. But yeah, that was a catastrophic failure. However, I put some tape on the bed to hold it in place. I redid the settings for the print and I printed it again. And it wasn't entirely bad. The bottom few layers look a bit weird and inconsistent, but from the knees upwards, the print is actually quite gorgeous. There is a slight bit of stringing, which is to be expected. But other than that, I think it turned out very, very well. So what do I like about this printer? I, I love the way that it's enclosed in clear acrylic. I think being aimed at a younger generation, this, they got it right. This, this is the perfect setup for a printer that has to be used by a younger generation. The build volume is acceptable at 130 by 130 by 130. If you want to experiment on a printer, especially when you're young, this, this should do the trick. In terms of frame, it actually is quite sturdy. Um, even though it is acrylic, it's very thick acrylic. It's about seven millimeters. So it makes for a very, very sturdy frame and everything is glued together really nicely. So you don't have any screws anywhere that sort of block the view. However, there are unfortunately many things that I kind of don't like about the Sprinter. The heat bit is something I've made my piece with a long time ago. It's not something I find necessary, especially when you have to print just with PLA. If it was a high-end printer, then a heat bed is definitely a must. Not having an LCD screen, that is not something I particularly like. I, I, I don't like printing via tethering uh, because if there's an update or something goes wrong with the, uh, with the laptop, that's it, your print is ruined as has happened to me. And also the fact that, okay, you can use the SD card and rename it. You can only hold one file on the SD card because you, it has to be the same file name each time. The other thing that I don't like is the way the bed is set up. This just comes off. It's kind of like a silicone finish. And that's fine. However, the problem is that while you're printing, sometimes the bed moves. It only has holders in place for two sides, not the other two sides. So if it loses friction, that just comes off the bed just like this. So that was another disappointing thing. One other thing which I noticed, it wasn't disappointing, it was more annoying. The extruder has, well, the filament has a small hole at the top where filament goes through. That's all well and good if you're printing in the center of the bed. But once you have a print that is actually larger than normal, what starts happening is that. And many times I would be printing and I keep thinking that my print is failing or the extruder is jammed because you keep hearing that kind of clicking noise. And that became very annoying. So most of the time I had to print with the open top. One other small thing which kind of annoyed me um, is the fact that the 
SD card port is at the back. Now, what happens is if you have set this up on a shelf like I did, and you have to reach at the back and put the SD card in, it actually has quite a large slot uh, underneath the SD card inlet. And what happened in my case is that seeing as I was reaching around and trying to put the card blind, I actually dropped it inside the printer itself without being able to get it out. Now, if someone had to purchase this printer, that has to stay there for quite some time because if you try to take the bottom off, your warranty is voided. And finally, the one thing I find to be a big issue on not just this 3D printer, any 3D printer, and that is the lack of a part cooling fan. I, it, it, it's really hard for me to understand how you can produce a 3D printer that is specifically for PLA that does not have a part cooling fan. It kind of makes the whole concept redundant because it needs effective cooling in order to lay down properly. Without a part cooling fan, that's just not gonna happen. If it had some kind of way of using the um, hot end fan in order to also cool the part itself, then that's fine. Some printers can actually make that work but you might want to reduce that fan speed or so on and so forth. So that, that kind of is disappointing to me. Now the printer has a retail value of $489 and that is not cheap, almost $500. And for that price, these days, the competition is fierce. Granted, this is a much safer printer than you might find at $150 or $200 range, but that's mainly because it does not have a heat bed or maybe the software has certain features to prevent the hot end from overheating. But I just, it's, it's very hard for me to, uh, to get a grip with the fact that this is a $500 printer. So that is it for me, guys. Disclaimer, this printer was sent to me by Kaleido Europe in order for me to do this unbiased review. No money has exchanged cans. I was not compensated in any way to do this review. And any thoughts that I had on this printer were my own and based on my experience with this unit that I have received right here for review. Thank you very much for watching guys. I wanna thank my patrons whose support means the absolute world to me. Please comment, um, like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making guys.